In this section, we're going to look at a few of the different tools that you'll need to install a shingle roof. The good news is that there are relatively few tools needed to install asphalt shingles. I think that this is probably one of the reasons that shingles have become such a popular form of roofing, as they can be installed with just a few common hand tools. We're going to start with the first step you need for your, any roofing project, the ladder. Now there are a variety of ladders out there that are going to work, but uh, I'm going to just make a few tips about ladder safety. First of all, make sure that you're using a quality ladder that's in good condition and that's rated for the amount of weight that you're going to be carrying up the ladder. Now all ladders have a sticker on the side that tell you how much weight they're, uh, they're rated to carry. Uh, most common homeowner type of ladders are only rated up to 200 pounds. You want to add your own weight and the weight of a typical bundle of shingles which is between 60 and 80 pounds and make sure that the ladder that you're using is at least really close to that number. Um, if it's not, you need to find another high quality ladder. Ladder is really one of the most dangerous tools that we use in roofing and you want to make sure that you don't have any accidents uh, getting on or getting off the roof. Hey everybody, thank you so much for watching this video. Please hit subscribe so you can be a part of my channel. You can watch all my videos that cover complete stages of both shingle and metal roofing. There's tons more content coming out soon about all aspects of roofing, including skylights and trim and sheds and whatever you're interested in. Now, how you set up your ladder is going to contribute significantly to its safety. Um, and we'll show you in a second how we use a couple of these stabilizers tools. But first, you get your ladder stable on uh, solid ground. Um, and when you place your ladder against the house, I'm a big fan of using a couple different stabilizer tools. Now, this is uh, just a common commercial ladder stabilizer that hooks onto it. And these arms rest on the roof or on the side of the house or the gutter or something like that. Um, so if you have one of these, that's great. Um, but I like uh, making my own stabilizer like this. Again, I'm going to show you in a second how we use this on the roof, but this is just a piece of plywood. It's about three by three, and we just cut a groove, this, this notch out of it uh, that's the width of the ladder, and the ladder rests in this while this is attached to the roof, and that's going to make a really solid connection and keep the ladder stable. We also have drilled a few holes in it. You can see right here and here for this bungee cord, which is we're going to install to uh, hold the ladder in place. So let's go outside and I'm going to show you how we put this on the roof and how it holds the ladder. All right, so I brought you outside here to show you how we uh, install and utilize the, the homemade ladder stabilizer. Uh, so what we did was bring the stabilizer up on the roof. We nailed it real securely into the roof so that it's not going anywhere. And we nailed it so that it's keeping the ladder just shy of the gutter. Um, so it's pushed out a little bit. This stabilizer is really helpful for protecting your gutters or your fascia or anything like that. It keeps the ladder off of it. So we nailed the, the stabilizer in. You can see right here I've got this bungee cord that's holding the ladder in. That's going to keep it real secure from, from coming off. And um, these stabilizers are great for preventing the ladder, ladder from obviously moving left, left to right, which is your real danger, especially when you got up against a gutter. It can be kind of slippery. Uh, when you're getting off the roof especially, the ladder might want to slide to one side or the other. So this will keep you real safe. So once you're on the roof, you're going to need something to remove the shingles if you're doing a tear off. Now there are a variety of tools that are sold for this and I'm going to show you a few of them in the tear off section. Uh, my favorite tool though for doing the tear off is just a common garden fork like this. Um, these are a lot cheaper than the purpose built tools for tearing off. They work just about as well and then after you're done with your roofing, you can use something, you can use it for something else. Um, Check out the section on tear off for some more detail on the type of tools you can use and how to use them. So I've got a few of the tools here uh, on the table that you'll probably need to install the roof with. Um, you're you're going to want a good pair of gloves. Uh, shingles are pretty coarse and after you've worked with them for a while, uh, you're going to really rough up your hands. I'm a big fan of these thin gloves with this kind of uh, plasticky coating on it. They're these type with the blue rubber coating. Um, these are really cheap. They fit tightly to your hands, and, but they still give you plenty of dexterity in your fingers to work with. Uh, as far as hand tools go, there are just a few items that you'll need. A sturdy hammer is essential even if you're going to use a nail gun. Uh, you're also going to need a flat bar like this to help you remove nails as you go. Um, there's a couple different types of this. I like this simple flat bar. I also uh, found that it fits really well if you have a tool belt. Um, you can slide it in the in between the belt and the pouch right here to keep it handy. 
Um, you're going to want to keep a chalk line on hand for uh, marking out your shingles, marking out the plywood if you're going to do any repair. Uh, I've always preferred uh, using this red type of chalk. Um, the color's more visible and stays on a little bit longer uh, than the other colors. Um, I also recommend tracking down one of these silver Sharpie permanent markers. Um, these are great for marking up your layout because the silver ink shows up really well on the black felt paper. Um, so another thing that you're going to need is a good quality razor knife. You're going to be cutting paper and your shingles a lot. One essential thing that you're going to want to track down for your razor knife is a, a hook blade like this. This is different than your standard straight blade. The hook blades are a lot better at cutting shingles than the traditional straight blade and they're going to make your job a lot easier. Um, you can usually find these in home improvement stores or definitely at any roofing supply house. I'd start your job off with at least 10 of these blades because they uh, dull very quickly when you're cutting the rough shingles. Now, depending on the type of flashing that you're going to be using, uh, a good pair of tin snips like these is really important. I'd recommend finding a type like this that have uh, an offset blade as they are a lot easier to cut the metal with in my opinion. Let's see, you're going to need a caulk gun. Uh, you're also going to need a measuring tape of uh, some kind. I'm a big fan of these uh, types of tapes that have these really stiff, stiff, thick blades. To me, it just makes it a lot easier uh, to measure and hold out on the roof uh, when you're doing your work. Now, as far as power tools go, the only thing that you're likely going to absolutely need is a circular saw like this. Um, you're going to need to cut this to cut your ridge vent and possibly do some wood repair if you have some damaged decking. A uh, good sharp blade on your saw is also going to make your work a lot easier and is a lot safer to use. Now, you definitely don't need a nail gun to install shingles with, but it may make your job easier. If you got a big job or you're planning on doing more than one shingle roof, it may be a good investment. However, like many power tools, there are pros and cons. Of course, with the gun, you're also going to need cords, you're going to need a compressor to run this. So if you don't have any of that, you're going to spend hundreds of dollars getting set up just for this one job. Um, in the hand of a trained professional, these guns can do a really good job, but they're not foolproof. The point that I'm making is that while it might seem like an essential investment, I'd really recommend just hand nailing your first few roofs uh, to get a good feel for it before you make an investment in a tool like this. If you do have a gun or you buy one for your project, maybe you can borrow one. Um, I'm going to give you a few tips on using them in the section on fastening. Uh, one item, if you're working with power tools that I found like is a really good investment, is this type of uh, lightweight uh, poly hose. Uh, these, these hoses are much lighter, they're more flexible and easier to use than the old heavy rubber hoses and PVC hoses that I used to use. So a couple other things that you may need if you're working on a steeper roof are some roof jacks like this. Um, I've got two different kinds here. This one is just a fixed uh, roof jack. You're going to nail it to the roof. I'll show you how to do this later. And then you can fit a two by six board in here. You'll need a couple of these to run along the roof. And uh, this other type that I have here is uh, an adjustable uh, jack. And this is better for making a platform depending on the steepness of your roof. You can set it. Uh, to, to establish a platform on. Um, you know, as I said in the safety section, if you're new at this, I wouldn't really recommend uh, starting off on a really steep roof that you need tons of roof jacks just to access the roof and do the work, but a couple of these might come in handy if the roof's a little steeper and you need to spend some time doing some flashing, say around a chimney or a sidewall or something like that, you can put a couple of these in to just help hold some of your tools and materials or just brace up against uh, if you're sitting there for a couple hours flashing your chimney, something like that. I'd be remiss in a discussion of important tools for shingle roofing to not mention an important piece of safety equipment. Uh, this is an official uh, fall protection harness system. You'll notice that this is made specifically for roofing and other applications. It's got this big loop that goes on your back um, that will help protect you in the event of a fall. So throughout the series, you won't see us using that because we're just working on these little models uh, inside. But if you're working outside on a roof uh, that's one story or more tall, you definitely want to get one of these setups. It comes with a couple other pieces and instructions on how to attach it securely to the roof and use it. Um, it's an essential piece of safety equipment, and especially if you're not used to working on roofs, 
using one of these can really save yourself uh, down the road. These, uh, these systems are not very expensive and they can be found at some big home improvement stores and definitely through your roofing supplier. Let's see, a few more items that you might need for your project are some big tarps to protect the ground and landscaping. Uh, while you're doing a tear off, you also might need a wheelbarrow to carry off the debris. Uh, aside from that, that's about all the tools you're gonna absolutely have to have. Again, as we go through the videos, you're gonna see how we use them and that sort of thing might give you a better idea about exactly which type of hammer or that sort of thing that you're gonna need to buy. If you'd like the complete series for yourself on how to do shingle or metal roofing, you can go to my website, roofingintelligence.com, and there you can get a membership to either stream or you can get a DVD in the mail. It'll show you how to do all the steps for either of those types of roofing. Enjoy this video. Thanks so much for watching.